The absence of an employment bill from the recent Queen's speech has led to criticism from the press and from the employment law industry. Whilst we therefore do not expect to see any imminent legislation, this does not prevent companies from improving their policies. In a competitive labour market, being proactive and ahead of the game can really boost an employer's reputation. Here are two policies that you might wish to consider implementing. The first is about preventing sexual harassment in the workplace. We had been told that there would be a positive duty introduced which would require employers to seek to prevent sexual harassment in the workplace. Whilst the legislation will now not be enacted in the immediate future, the aim of this new duty was to encourage employers to take proactive steps to make the workplace safer for everyone. And the lack of imminent legislation should not necessarily mean a lack of action from employers in achieving this goal. Employers might now wish to consider reviewing current policies and procedures to identify any gaps or lacks of clarity in the standards and expectations around sexual harassment. The aim should be able to have a, zero, a culture of zero tolerance. A specific policy for sexual harassment could include a range of options for reporting, a formal procedure for dealing with complaints, and information about the support available for those who suffered sexual harassment. Engaging with staff before producing a new policy can be important to uncover where there are potential issues within the workplace. Training is likely to be required by any new law in this area. Employees should be trained on what sexual harassment in the workplace looks like, what to do if they or any of their colleagues experience it, and how to handle any complaints. Harassment by a third party should also be treated seriously. It's particularly important to consider this in high-risk workplaces where staff might be left alone with customers. The government has said it's considering introducing legal protections from third-party harassment. The second policy is to consider carer's leave. We had been told that a new day one right to carer's leave would be introduced when parliamentary time allows. This leave was going to consist of one week, five working days of unpaid leave per year for employees managing long-term caring responsibilities alongside their work. The leave would be available to take flexibly in half day blocks of up to one week. If implemented, it is likely that the leave will include providing personal support, helping with official and financial matters and accompanying someone to medical and other appointments. Employers could really get ahead of the game here by introducing this change and adapting their policies to allow carers to have leave 